this game One goal, one team Fight for that possession, gotta act fast Another shot, another pass Devotion. Shane Larkin, right the That's ball. the ball, Shane Alonso must have snatched with the... Larkin dışarı da, Shane, Sertaç Şanlı'yı buldu, Vasilya Mitzic. Vasilya Mitzic then! Tyson perdesi, Tyson devrildi. Brock geldi, Chris Singleton, Singleton nereden? Singleton nereden çıktı öyle? Şimdi Vasilya Mitzic, yarı sahaya hızlı geçtik. Mitzic, oh. köşeye nefis pas! Sertan Şanlı, <gülüyor> Sertan Şanlı, Sertan Şanlı! Gustav <gülüyor> Simon, şimdi Rodrigo Boboğa, dışarıda Sertan Şanlı. Köşede Chris Singleton'ı buldu, Singleton. Üç aylık isabet, Chris Singleton! <gülüyor> One, two, three. Okay. Shane Larkin. Tibor Plyce. Plyce! Bravo, man. Plyce! Bir üçlükte Plyce'dan geldi. Tibor Plyce. Çok ama çok kritikti bu. Shane Larkin. Vasilya Mitzic. Yine Larkin. Trey Tompkins de. Larkin. Bravo, Shane man. Larkin! Maç, sezonun ilk maçı geçen sezon yarım kalan bir hikayeden başlayacak Anadolu Efes Sinan Erdem Spor Salonu'nda Zenit St. Petersburg'la karşı karşıya gelecek ve özel önlemlerle yeni normalin özel önlemleriyle biz de karşınızdayız. I mean that's pretty much the, slo the slogan speaks for itself you know we felt like we had a chance to win a championship a few years ago. We fell a little bit short. Last year we came out strong all season, leading the league, beating everybody by a lot, um, and felt like we were well on our way to, to winning that championship that we lost the year before. I think last year we knew we were the clear favorites to win, um, something we, has never been done in the history of FS basketball. Obviously COVID comes out of nowhere, stops that. And now, you know, just having carried that for a few years now, we just feel like there's unfinished business that we need to go take care of. So that's the mindset, that's the dedication, that's the motivation that we've had all year. And now we have a chance to go com co complete it. For me, it was a special situation because I was waiting for that moment to go to Cologne, to my hometown, to play these games for so long. And then uh, the, that's, the season was broken up, was not that easy to accept, but I mean, now we made it again. Same goals as before, uh, reaching it to this point and then trying to take the trophy home. Uh, it's always been the goal, it's always been the plan. And uh, unfortunately, last year didn't get to happen for us, uh, which we thought we had a pretty good chance of winning the cup. So this year we want to finish, finish, the, finish the job. You know, we felt like we were really close to our goals. And uh, it was probably, you know, one of the best chances that we had to, to, uh, to achieve the goal that we, that we wanted to reach to, to take the EuroLeague championship. And, uh, you know, it, it didn't happen. Um, you know, it's, it's nobody's fault, but uh, that gave us a little bit extra motivation coming into this season, um, you know, to, to, to prove everybody wrong again. Well, it was, uh, it was, first of all, it was tough for everybody to, to stop, knowing that uh, we felt like we had a big chance to do something special last season. We were in a very good position. We were playing very good basketball. But uh, as you know, uh, a pandemic happened and it was a crazy situation for everybody, not, not only us, so things happen. For sure we'll be maybe champion or something like this, but we, we can be like, you know, thinking about this because season is coming fast after, you know, and uh, like we say, we talk uh, beginning of the season, you say we put this behind us. Mentally, uh, I think a lot of guys are just happy to be back on the court playing basketball again. Um, you know, with the situation with the world, um, you know, we didn't know if we were going to be able to play, but, uh, you know, the early did a great job uh, making it um, safe for us to play again. And, um, 
you know, we got through the season. Um, but uh, in the beginning, we were all uh, just happy to be back playing again and, and uh, competing again. I knew that we, we are in great rhythm. We really had amazing run uh, in that moment. But uh, I just understand that things are happening with a reason. So they stop this because of many other things, not just basketball or somebody do it against us. I think this was nothing against us. It was more like people didn't know what to do. Then secondly, they tried to solve, but at the end they didn't find solution. It was many reasons. Geçen sezon, yani elimizde olmayan sebeplerden ötürü şimdi itiraz edecek bir durum yok. Niye? Yani şikayet etsen ve balini üstünüze alıyor musunuz diye şeyler diyenler olabilir. Tamamıyla da hak veriyorum bunlara. Yani şikayet etmiyorum. Sezonun başında da e, geçen senenin o şekilde bitirilmesinden dolayı bir inişli çıkışlı bir grafimiz olduğu doğru. İşte o onu kabullenme süreci biraz uzun sürdü. I don't think it is unfinished. Uh, I, I would like to say more that this year is one more time confirmation for us that we make good team, that we have good team, that we have good players to play the same way, similar way. Okay, we didn't finish first in the regular season, but still we reached play uh, final four. And for me, that's that's more my orientation to this year and new challenge. Everybody is speaking about this un, unfinished, unfinished business. I don't. I don't have that opinion, you know. It's uh, sport is sport is like that. Sometimes when you expect that you will win, that when you are the best, you can lose one game. So I don't think about last season. I think only about this season and about our chances to win it. Of course, we have it. We are in last four teams, but it's a long, long trip. Temsilcimiz Anadolu Efes Kızıl Yıldız deplasmanında önemli bir maça çıkıyor. Önemli eksiklerle geldik Kızıl Yıldız deplasmanına. Özellikle daha az önce ekrana gelen şeyin Larkin'in devreye girmesiyle yükselişe geçen bir Anadolu Efes var. Ama bugün Dustin, Rodik Boba, Flies ve Mitchich gibi isimlerden yoksun sahada olacağız. Um, it was difficult, you know. Uh, I don't think we had our full roster for maybe 15 games this year. It's it's funny because I remember we practiced here in the pra practice facility. We had six people in practice, six people, and we had to call up uh, younger kids uh, just to make ten so we can get play basketball a little bit. And that just shows you what shape we were in and where we were at the time. Um, so being able to. Well, not having those people all together and trying to find that rhythm all together was difficult. It was always from our side too, because we, we tried to, uh, to compensate the uh, missing of Shane that year before that he had 20, I don't know how many points average with five assists. This is always 30 points in your hands, so you got to find a way to put them in the different solution. I mean, for our team, uh, we had not only COVID, but uh, certain little injuries uh, starting the season. Uh, we started without Shane, uh, and then Dunstan and Roddy had two. Other than that, we also had uh, some other things, like as you said, uh, Brian Dunstan, he just caught the return. He came very motivated in the season after last year with that he had injury, and suddenly this small injury. And these, these things affect us. Efes, this season, in the first performance, Birçok oyuncusu birçok maçı kaçırdı. Bugün de Shane Larkin, Sertaç Şanlı ve Brian Dunstan takımda yoklar. Üç oyuncusundan yoksun bir şekilde sahaya çıkıyor Anadolu Efes. Bakalım maçta neler olacak. Tibor Plyce gir orta mesafe. Bir daha Tibor Plyce. Evet Tibor Plyce savaşmaya devam ediyor. Sırtı dönük oynuyor arkasında Angelo Caloiro var. Tibor Plyce satışı kullandı. Tibor Plyce. Gerçekten inanılır gibi değil. Dileğini sallaya sallaya sürekli hareket ettire ettire oynamaya devam ediyor. Rodrik Boboa şimdi döndü köşeyi. Timur Plyce'ı buldu. Senin Plyce aklın, attı. Senin aklın Timur bu ya. Timur Plyce. Ayağını sürüye sürüye bu adam oynamaya devam ediyor. Öne geçiren basketi de attı. Actually, before the game, I thought like uh, maybe I'm not able to play, but I mean, with some painkillers, <laughs> everything is possible. So I stepped on the court, and then with the uh, adrenaline, um, yeah, I made it possible, and I had a good game, and we won the game on the end. So there's like one sentence like 
what doesn't kill you makes you stronger and I think I helped yeah, the team a lot in this game. You have to find your peace. You have to find inside of all these things peace that stay on the ground, works, work on yourself still and be able to manage recovery from something. Yeah, like me and Rodrigo, I think we, we get the same COVID together like uh, before the championship start. And uh, like you say, it's tough physically because you stay two weeks at home. You lost everything you get for pre-season, you know, it's not easy. Mentally, you need to be strong. So coming back this season was not easy because first of all, after missing so many months of competition, you know, we didn't have the same with him. Uh, some of our players were injured. Some guys got, uh, got the, the, the virus early in the season. So it was, a, it was a very tough start of the season. During COVID, I was out for two weeks, you know, and then like starting right away, we had two double weeks right away. And me without practicing any basketball during that time, not even being able to practice because we had the games right away. I mean, it was almost impossible. And I think maybe I did too much. And then this happened to my foot, maybe because of COVID, because I was out for two weeks. I didn't do anything. I mean, there was one situation I was at home and I tried to open uh, a bottle of uh, peas and I was not able to do it because I was so tired and uh, because of my sickness. During the season, we get uh, injury like Rodrig, uh, Bryant and Tibor. It's not easy. We play with me and Chris at the five with Sertaj with three big men during three, four, uh, I think three games. I mean, I guess it goes back to uh, Loco playing uh, with Anthony Randolph, playing four or five, depending on who the five-man guards. And then also going back to Panathinaikos, uh, when we wanted to space the floor a little bit, they put me at the five, Chavi uh, would. And, but, I mean, ever since I got to Europe, uh, Barzokas, uh, he told me how special I could be at the four or five position. Um, so uh, I guess I'm just open to it, ready for it. I guess, like I said, anything to win. It was obvious problems, like uh, not something that was inside of the team, so we couldn't solve that. We've been together for a long time, so we know what to expect from one another. So even though some players needed more time to find their rhythm, they have the, they have the trust, they have the belief, they have the, they have the support of all the other guys. And I think that helped a lot, because yes, we wanted to win, but the situation was uh, complicated, like, like you say, injuries, COVID. Yeah, of course it was hard, especially it was a new situation for everybody, you know, not only for us, for all other teams too. And uh, we struggled a lot in the beginning, it was, uh, it was not looking good, it was not easy to play. But, you know, every team faces adversity, especially in a season like this. Um, so for us to be able to face that adversity, fight through it, I think we came out of it, came out of it stronger. And it, at that moment, we really had negativity around us because of expectations. That's why I don't like to talk about future so much because it can happen to everyone. Uh, not because you want that to happen to you, but it can happen. Epes 17'de 8. Çok ilginç. Hani 3 galibiyet farkla 3. ile 13. sıralanıyor. It doesn't feel good. For sure it didn't feel good to be in that position knowing the potential that we had. But uh, as I said before, we knew. Uh, we played together for two years before that. We knew that we were way better than the 11th spot. I mean, we were like kind of it was like how can I say it? Like, I mean, the season before, you know, we were on the, by far on the first position. We thought like, hey, it's easy. We will go to the final four. Then they broke up the season. And we thought as a team that we could continue where we stopped the season before. And then being on the 11th position was kind of like unreal. That's something where we, we are not belong to be. I mean, I think everybody outside of the locker room was kind of panicking. I think the media, the fans, the random guy, you know, that just watches basketball. Um, everybody was thinking, like, what's going on with FS? They're not who we thought they were. Um, they're not going to make the playoffs. They're not going to... All these things. Sezon başında hatta çoğu kişi e, benimle konuştuğumda ne oldu? Hani dünyanın sonu geliyor herhalde. Hani siz yani playoff, playoff yapar mısınız gibi şeyler söylemeye başlamışlardı. Ama e, 
Şimdi bir kazanıyoruz, bir kaybediyoruz. İki kazanıyoruz, bir kaybediyoruz. İki galibiyet, bir galibiyet. Böyle durumlar geçen seneki durumun kabullenme sürecinden dolayı yaşandığını söyleyebilirim. Hatta bu ocağa kadar bu, bu şekilde devam etti. But also it was really important for us to face it, to understand that we are just any other team in that moment. Because uh, you cannot win championship in October or September in media day that everybody were talking about that. And we started to work from the zero. We started to work from zero. We started to understand that we are not uh, unstoppable. We, we can lose, we can have bad strike, we can have good strike. But this brought us together more to stick together. And uh, it was useful uh, lesson for us. Uh, we all kind of understood what was going on with us as a team. Uh, so none of us really panicked. We stayed calm, stayed patient, continue to work, continue to fight through adversity. And then uh, we got everybody back healthy. Everybody started to find their rhythm. I think on the beginning of this season, we said, oh, we have the same team. It will be easy for us to find the rhythm. We know each other. It will be easy for the system and, and everything. But team, you know, everything changed. You know, they, they, they take some new player like Moscow. They, they had some great player, stuff player, you know. Everybody come, play against us, aggressive, and we are not ready to play. We just needed to be patient, but still working hard in practice and believe in each other. And that's what we did. We, had, we were patient and uh, we, we pushed ourselves because nobody was happy with the situation. For standing, I don't watch that at all, really. I don't even know. I didn't know until the last round that we lost Milano, who's going who's gonna to be our opponent. I didn't know nothing about my statistics, not because I'm not able to see that, put two fingers uh, or, or, or go on the website. Because this is just something that you don't need to know, because you are aware of that. You know when you play good or when you play bad. You know when your team is in good shape or bad shape. So all these things can be additionally uh, pressure, unnecessary pressure from what you already have. You come every day to practice, you do your best. If you do your best always, then you don't need to doubt on yourself because you are okay with yourself. So that's why I, I, this didn't affect me. We knew that every game was important. Um, you know, coach would tell us um, before every game, we, this is a must-win game. Um, and that happened for maybe 10, 10 games in a row. And it was different that we didn't experience really in the first two seasons because we won so many games. So uh, with our backs against the wall and uh, being in 11 spot, they gave us something to, to keep fighting for and uh, we knew that we still wanted to reach our goal which was to make the Final Four. We just start fighting and uh, trying to take each game one by one and uh, we just start streaking wins. And then once we got everybody back healthy, everybody back into a rhythm, you kind of saw uh, us take off as a team and I think we peaked at the right moment. Also I felt that all Europe, let's say all teams, were a little bit, let's say, scared of us because they know that we can make that run. Not that good like we made from second half, but that was not our realistic point, but it was actually when you look standing. We knew that if we just stayed the course and we just made the playoffs, we had a good chance, but everybody else started losing and we we caught our rhythm towards the end and we went on a run and we got to the third spot. At the moment that we understand that we as a team have to stop watching that and count on these victories or losses. That was the moment that we understand, hey, we are good, we are still fine, we have still the same roster, we have to be healthy. With healthy team we can be dangerous and that's how we started to make small but safe steps and that's how we managed to come to the point that we are now. Yeah, I mean, it was a tough season but we fight each other through. Ended up on a really good position on the end. We had the home goal advantage and went to the final four. Sometimes that's basketball, that's sport. You know, sometimes the unexpected happened, and I mean, now we made it. Simon. <laughs> Vasilyevic yine Larkin. Trey Tompkins de Larkin. 
Takımın liderini sordun. Şimdi ben mi isterim? Simon gelir, Shane der. Shane gelir, Simon der. Dunstan gelir, Koç der. Tibor gelir, Dunstan söyler. Yani işte bizim takım olmamızın, yani bu kadar iyi bir takım olmamızın sebebi bunu söyleyebilirim. Herkes kendi görevinin bilincinde. Yeri geliyor senin dediğin gibi. Yani bir maç başka bir oyuncu çıkıyor, liderliği alıyor. Diğer oyuncular ona eşlik ediyor. Şeyin çıkıyor başka bir maçta liderliği alıyor. Mitch hiç onun yanında tamamlayıcı oluyor. Ee, bu diğer takımlar üstündeki baskıyı sağlamamızdaki en önemli etken. I mean it's something that I've I've preached for a while now. It's never been about me. It's never been about one single person on this team. Uh, it's always been about us. It's always been about who has it going and how we can make them be better. Um, so it really didn't matter. Um, you know we all have talent. We all have abilities. We're a very talented roster. So um, at the end of the day. Uh, it's very comforting knowing that anybody at any time can go off and, and have a big game and have a big moment and, and carry us to a victory. I don't know what other guys said, but uh, every player has different momentum. Every player has different motivation. You know, somebody has, I don't know, MVP award. Somebody has statistical motivation, money motivation. You know, for me it was like. Just I was trying just to go game by game, and as I said, not looking at these things that everybody knows already, or even reading more social media, what I don't, which I don't do last ten, five years. So I put everything on the side, and I just go day by day, doing everything what I do in generally, and then to see what is come come uh, out of that. Uh, just unique. I mean, we got. You would say we got veteran guys that are still young. Beecher is relatively still young, and then we got a lot of older guys that that have played playoff basketball, that have been to the top. And I think we all just know we wanted to win. So I think we kind of rode the wave of who was doing what during the game, and we just kind of just try to feed them the ball or try to get them in their spots and stuff like that. Like everybody can step up. Like sometimes somebody has a bad day, but we know. There's somebody who got your back, you know. There's somebody who's stepping up, who can uh, fill up your position. We got so much talent. Uh, this is what I love because we can expect this guy we play good, or maybe sometimes Shane don't have ba a bad game, but behind Rodrigue and Missis play good, you know. Or sometimes maybe I don't know, like Sertes don't play good, but Bryant is behind, you know. This is what I love on this team because everybody can score, everybody can add something to this team. If we prove on the, during all season we okay we got two leadership Shane and uh, and Missish but sometimes when they are not in the game we need to find solution and with this talent team is easy to find. We believe in ourselves. We we trust each other. And uh, yeah, so when we play like that, when we we found um, the connection on the court and we play like that and everybody play with confidence, usually uh, we are very hard to beat because like I said we have so much talent in this team. Every basket can from so to everywhere, you know, to the first position, to the five position. This is why we are, uh, you know, the the good team, and this is why coach won't keep the same team. You know, and, and coach coach trusts us also to make those those tough decisions down the stretch. And uh, whether we win the game or lose the game, we know that we we all want to win. We're all playing uh, for the team, and uh, that's the most important thing for us. We are showing now third year in a row that we are great teammates, that we are good friends, and. Uh, that we enjoy to play together. That is the most important. So, most important is to feel happy for somebody else when he is scoring, when he is playing good, and uh, and we have that in our team, which is which is rare and which is big big thing for the last month of the season, which is in front of us. All those guys did a great job of leading the way all year. Everybody on the team is very critical, just uh, for each part of the game, uh, and anybody can get hot at any time, which make us a dangerous team. One through fifteen, and uh, it just show you how deep our roster is. When you when you take a look on our team, like sometimes you have a starting five, but if you look on the bench, like what kind of quality you have on the bench as well, it's unbelievable. Uh, I think it comes from trust, uh, trust in each other. Um, we know what each other can do. We, we you know we've been around each other for uh, three years now, so uh, we we all believe in each other's abilities. Um, we don't we don't question any decisions that we make on the court. Anadolu Efes 86, Barcelona 79, Shane Larkin 23 sayı, 7 rebound, 8 asist. Gerçekten onun kendisine gelmesine çok ihtiyacımız vardı.
Look, it's hard to say turning points because it's a lot, lots of lots of games. You know, first part of the of the league is 34 games, so it's hard to pick. You know, one game as a as a ter as a turning point. It's tough to say. I will have to wait the end of the season to analyze all that. It was just like okay, one game after another. Like so, like I said, at one point we were in a very bad position, and I was just trying to focus to okay, how we make it better for the next one. It's hard for me to say what was the turning point. Yeah, I can. I don't know. Good question. Um, I think the the breakthrough of the season was probably the Barcelona game at home. Um, I think either the we lost four games in a row before that, or somewhere around then we had lost to Basconia, Milan, uh, Cesca, Valencia, and they were like bad losses. Some at the buzzer, some we got blown out, and um, that was really a moment where we all kind of looked at each other and said, "All right." Um, we can continue going this way or we can, you know, put our foot down and start heading in the right direction. One game, I think, maybe the Valencia loss uh, on the road when we lost at the buzzer. Um, we had a meeting and we talked about um, everything uh, with our team. We, we, everybody just spoke their mind. We were completely open and, um, you know, the coaches and, and the players, we, we came together and we said, OK, we have to fix this. To change it all is probably the Maybe the Seska game, as Seska. I think that's what we all had to be accountable. We all had to figure out how to to find our groove, find uh, find our rhythm. To lose by 35 is is painful, you know. Like we don't play good, we don't make nothing. We got 11 plays. That's kind of one of those games where you just had to look and reflect on what we've done and uh, what we're capable of doing. It wasn't really so much uh, the loss, it was just mainly focusing on ourselves. After CSKA again, we came together as a team. We talked about the situation where we are and where we don't want to be anymore. It wasn't just bad basketball, it was bad energy, it was bad... Um, like it, it looked like we didn't care um, out there on the court. And, you know, it's one thing to have a bad game, to shoot bad, to turn the ball over, to play bad defense, but it's another thing to not put the effort in. And I think that game we kind of played bad, but on top of that we also had bad energy and bad effort. And I think that was the biggest um, point that w was spoken about in that meeting. And the meeting was about to say everything what you got, like, because you have same team, you have same strategy, and it's obvious problem. And everybody see that, feel that, but nobody has Nobody's brave to say that loudly or, or directly. The meeting was like that, that we started from the oldest one. I, I, I'm the youngest in the team, let's say, that has bigger, ma major role. So when it came to me, I was the last one, I really said everything what I have and what I see, because uh, there was no time to wait for something. Like, uh, it was not about that I was something like loud or I was so strict, but I just felt that and I said it and I think that together with other opinions from the, from the players we finally understand that main thing is that hey, don't point finger on each other, we are a team, like we got to stick together, you cannot bring 10 more players, you cannot bring another 10 coaches or whatever, you got to find the solution with that you have and it was good, it was really good. We all talked about how we need to be better, how we need to hold each other accountable, how if I make a turnover, if I make a bad play, it is what it is. but. Defensively, you can't not show up. You can't not go all out for your teammates. And people were checking each other, and you know, it's a, it's a good feeling knowing that you can tell me something and I'm not going to take it personally, but if I have something I think about you, I can tell you the same thing and you're going to take it as constructive criticism and we're only going to get better from this. And um, that meeting was a lot of that. Uh, we were calling each other out. Coach was calling us out. We were talking to the coach about certain things that we thought were better for the team. So. Um, it was a great meeting. I think we all kind of put it all out there and we all washed our hands after it and we left that behind us and then we just kind of moved forward from it and you know that meeting was also a breaking point in our season that really helped us get to where we needed to get to and helped to get us back to where we needed to be. We understood that every team that was coming to play against us was was uh, looking at us as if we won the championship last year. You know they were they were seeing that they're playing against a, a top level team so uh, we had to bring uh, higher, higher efforts, higher energy, and uh, it started in practice from them. I mean, from that, that day, everything changed. Like, everybody stood up, like, we practiced harder. 
I think it's uh, the last game of the first part of the season. And this is why we change our mentality when we go to Asvel for the second one. You know, we we we mo we become more aggressive, and this uh, this is what coach wants. And I'm happy. You know, we we are this team. You know, like we talk and we react. And I think after getting blown out by 30, 40 points, like <laughs> you kind of reset, start over, and then you start to build from there. Once we figured that out and knew what we had to do uh, as a team, it started to click back together. Barcelona game at home, and uh, I think we all came out with a different energy that game, a different mindset, a different motivation, and um, really fought uh, and won that game. And then once we won that game, you know, we started feeling better about each other, feeling about better about what we had going on, and then I think that kind of propelled us to where we are now. Deplasmandaki Barcelona maçını söyleyebilirim. Ee, çünkü ondan önce gene Barcelona'yı içeride yendik ama herkes konuşuyordu. Ee, biz galiba 10 ya da 11. sıradaydık öyle bir şeydi tam hatırlamıyorum. İlk 8'den bir tek Barcelona'yı yenmişiz ama Barcelona da eksikti diye söylemler oluyordu. The game that was crucial, maybe the, that, we, that we really felt that power, maybe Barca away from the second part of the season. We really had amazing game. Deplasmanlık Barcelona maçından sonra nasıl geçen sene nasıl oyun oynadığımızı hatırladık, nasıl fark yarattığımızı, nasıl saha içinde o kendi gücümüzü ortaya koyduğumuzu, nasıl diğer takımlardan farklı olduğumuzu hatırladık. So you know we had to make sure uh, that we won the games that we lost uh, against teams especially when we gave up home home victories to, to other teams we uh, you know we lost some games at home that we shouldn't have lost uh, we had to go into their their arenas and win and we, we did those things when we get in that streak when we win i don't know nine ten maybe 11 games in a row something like that i i don't remember because it was a few months ago but then we then we saw that that we are old fs which which we get used to in these last two years and that we are and that we are going up. Yeah, everybody tried to give more game by game and on the end we ended up on the top. So that's how it is. Sometimes it's bad, but if you don't change anything, you cannot change your situation. So sometimes you, you have to give more to, to expect more. Bayanlar Baylar, Turkey Shareline's Euroleague Playoff'a hoş geldiniz. 3-6 eşleşmesi bu. Sezonu 3. sırada bitiren Anadolu Efes. Real Madrid'e karşı tabii ki çok zorlu, çok heyecan verici bir eşleşme olacak. Bakalım Anadolu Efes favori olarak çıktığı seride neler yapacak. They are talented team, you know, it's not easy for, for... I know Madrid got a good character too, you know, it's not be easy to beat them 3-0. Last 10 years, this year, they were the two times they were in playoffs. How much they were playing, how much they were playing, how much they were playing, they were playing, they were playing. I mean, it was very difficult, um, like you said, it was up and down. Uh, won the first two games and, you know, everybody was like, can anybody stop Efes? They're gonna run through everybody, you know. One experience that I had in uh, my first playoff uh, with Jalgiris was that when you when you play playoff, you cannot hide anything. It's pure mental preparation and individual performance. And then we kind of relaxed. We we we believed into into the hype too much, and we were like, ah, we're gonna win them by a lot easy. Maybe because we won the first two games so easily. Uh, maybe we were a little bit too relaxed. Maybe we saw ourselves being qualified. And then, you know, Madrid showed up and they were like, we're not going to back down, we're going to fight, we're going to, you know, try to win on our home court. Kind of slapped us in our face while we weren't expecting it. Biraz yumuşama gösterdiğiniz zaman o o yumuşamayı hissediyorlar, o kokuyu alıyorlar. Direkt hamlelerini yapıyorlar ve maçı kazanıyorlar. Clearly after the two games they changed some stuff, they play a different type of defense that made us think a little bit too much. Then we face uh, some different zones against Real and that was great uh, from from their coach. But still, if we don't talk about that zone, we were leading by 15, 20. By what you want? I mean, no matter what they play. And actually, we really fought with ourselves on these two games that we lost in Madrid because we were already thinking ahead 
Uh, we already wanted to finish in after third quarter game, and basically you learn that you have to play 40 minutes. And that was completely scenario in the fifth game that we didn't give up till the end. To be honest, we were not afraid. You know, we are all experienced guys, and we said that we we need to enjoy that game and give our best to win the game. We were confident, but we're we're also cautious. You know, we were two two, and everybody talk, everybody speak about this zone, defense, offense. Uh, the Jordan quote, and I took that personal. <laughs> Alex Tyson, Patterson, Tyson, David. Look, yeah, the single to man. Single to man, that's it. Now, Vasilya Mitzic, the other side, we went. Mitzic, the second of the most sad action. Rudy Fernandez, the second of the most sad action. Rudy Fernandez, the second of the most sad action. Rudy Fernandez, the second of the most sad action. Haydi Chris Singleton. Studio. Ben sonraki isabet Chris Singleton'dan. Singleton'ın üçlü. Ya şu an yanıyor Singleton. Chris Singleton. <gülüyor> Ve Chris Singleton. Çok büyük oynuyor. Ayakta oynuyorum. kalıyor. Tek Çok başına ayakta oynuyor. kalıyor. İki saniye Sergio Yul. Bravo Mitsic. Bir saniye kala. Elde gösterdik Yul. Kaçırdı. Bravo Singleton. Singleton, be, bravo Singleton bugün ne Bir oynuyorsun be? be. Singleton bugün ne oynuyorsun be? Chris Singleton hayatının en iyi maçlarından birisini çıkarıyor. Eğer en iyisi değilse. 24 sayı, 8 rebound, 1 top çalma, 1 blok Chris Singleton. Chris played an amazing game. Uh, he was focused. He was focused every game, but you know that game specifically when when he got the ball, he was he was in attack mode. Like game fives, when you know it's do or die, that's when you gotta pull the best out. Uh, we knew game three and four that we could lose, like uh, but this one to to be up 2-0, to come back to 2-2, and then get the game five. I just felt that I mean you gotta leave it all out there. All the other games, he really wasn't. He was effective in other ways, uh, defensively and rebounding and. Not so much scoring, but that night he had the hot hand and scoring, and guys kept feeding him, and uh, Kuna made some critical shots. Mitsic. Tavares aldı üstüne. Mitsic. Dışarıya Chris Singleton. Sakin, 3 saniye. 2 saniye. Simon soluna vurdu. Simon. Simon! Simon! Simon! Simon! Kuna Simon! It was a great moment for me, to be honest, maybe one of the best shots I make in uh, in my career and of course I was happy when I saw it's, it's going in. It's instinct, you know, It's I don't say I, I was planning to take the ball, to shoot the ball, it was, I saw on a shot clock there is 3-4 seconds left on the shot clock, so you know, you must shoot the ball. Simon shot the ball, everyone Televizyonda gördü herkes benim yüzümdeki rahatlığı. Orada beni çekti, benim şansıma denk geldi, yani oradan herkes rahatladı. Because when you watch this game, we need to go. It was one or two points for them or something like that. So, but we didn't check that. We didn't check the box score. We, we were there, there, there, and then when the when they call end of the game, we, we understand that we won. So all these games uh, that we lost were very useful and big lessons for us because we beat so many games easily. So you gotta understand it. Stay on the ground. I think it was a great, a great learning lesson for us. Because uh, yeah, you need to be, you have to respect everybody, and you have to make sure that you you do, you play hard from the beginning to the end. And I hope we're gonna learn from that and uh, use it for the final form. Bu seri bize çok şey kattı diyebilirim çünkü bu üçüncü dördüncü maçta yaşadıklarımızı final forda yaşamış olsaydık belki etkisi daha fazla olacaktı. And um, you know, eventually at the end of the day, we won the series, we moved on. Um, but it was good for us to to be battle tested, to not just run through everybody. We had won the last, what, 14 out of 15 games in the EuroLeague by average of 20 something points. So I think it was good for us to to have that moment where it wasn't so clear that we were gonna win and see how we responded. Um, and I think that's how we did in, in that game five. And a lot of people showed up and, and played well and, and carried us to the final four. I mean, this is what we've said we want to do. This is what we put our goals at the beginning of the season. And this is one of them, make it to the Final Four and go back and try to win a championship. Vasilya Mitsic artık fişi çekiyor. Vasilya Mitsic artık fişi çekiyor. Ve Anadolu Efes bir kez daha Final Four'a yükseliyor. Turkish Airlines Euroleague'de Anadolu Efes yine Final Four'da. Çok 
Çok zor oldu İsmail. Çok zor oldu ama bu galibiyetle beraber gerçekten onda nefes. Bu playoff eşleşmesinde çok şey biriktirerek Final Four'a gidiyor şu anda. Çok şey kazanarak Final Four'a gidiyor. Uh, now we're here, like I said, back in the Final Four with a chance to win a championship and now we just got to continue with that momentum, continue with that fight, continue with that motivation and you know, hopefully this time the outcome is different than it was the last. In general, the Final Four is like doesn't matter who's on the other side, who's the opponent, you have to give everything. Every time you go to Final Four, you need to eliminate the big team. We eliminate Madrid. Right now you need to, to play against Moscow to, to be champion. It's not to be easy to, to take the trophy, you know. Now it's CSKA, of course, like it's a really strong and uh, big team, but we have to win against them to go to the, to the final game and we have to do it. There's no round, no way around. That's what I wanted to say. We already beat them if we need motivation, like, uh, so it's best. But uh, it's good that we play against them and I, I like that currently four best teams in Europe play Final Four. It's really... Uh, Four teams that show the most, in my opinion. So the f final four will be great to watch. The level of competition, the motivation, the the fight is a whole different level once you get to the final four. Uh, games against them, uh, they have obvious changes, uh, missing Milutino with James, but that helps them because they are long time together with the same coach to change the style, but at the same time to comes out with another leader like it's Clive now. They have different players. Um, you know the same. I don't want to say same system, but you know you kind of kind of figure they're similar to what they were before. Um, but at the same time, you know we have to we have to do our work. We have to prepare, and uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna start getting into that soon. And definitely, they have they are totally competitive for for each opponent on the on the final four. Experience that they have together is also big advantage for them. If you look as an advantage or disadvantage, these guys it seems that uh, I don't know how many times in a row they went to the final four. They are, I think, last final, last 15 final fours. They were on 14, so you know, very, very big experience, and we have to respect that. We cannot think in our minds that that we must win that game. You know, that that something will happen if we lose. They're very experienced. Like the, the the coach been their coach been there so many times. He knows how to play those kind of games, so for sure we respect this team. Uh, I think it'll be all the small details, like you said, two high offensive teams uh, who can put a lot of points on the board. Uh, they have dynamic players, we have dynamic players, so it's going to all come down to who want to rebound the most, uh, who take care of the ball uh, and get all those little key possessions. Uh, because each possession will matter. Yeah, I look forward to it. Uh, they're a good team. Uh, they spread the ball around and uh, they beat us by 30, we beat them by 30. So, I mean, it should be a good game. But uh, we're, we're looking forward to the challenge. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a really good one because uh, we played them in their place and they destroyed us. We played them in our place and we destroyed them. So now it's like, you know, this is gonna be uh, a great game. Hopefully, uh, maybe it'll be close. We'll see, we'll see how it goes, but it's all gonna come down to who wants it more, you know? Uh, well, hopefully it's another 30 point game, but I, I don't think it will be that way. It's going to be a battle. Whoever can get the most possessions with turnovers or steals or something like that to impact the game more, uh, I think will be the, the more dynamic team. We need to go step by step like we, like, like we did now, you know, to play, to play every, every possession full and then we will see. I'm sure that we have guys who can win that game and that, that we can win the championship, but you know, it's other teams have their plans too. We played three years together. We don't need 10 more years to understand each other. This is enough, I think. And the most important thing is to approach the same as any other game. So some extra motivation is worthless to say because if you're not motivated, you don't need to go to Colon. We are ready for the first game. There are two talented teams that are going to go at it and fight for everything that, that, that's at stake. We believe in ourselves. We believe on what we can do. So. We're gonna do everything to win the game. The beauty of uh, for the fans, the beauty of a uh, final four is that it's just one game, and one game, pretty much anything can happen. So we just need to do our best to be ready for this game and play as hard as possible. And yes, our goal is definitely to win. Ben takımıma katkı vermek için her şeyi yapmaya hazırım. Yani hiç fark etmez. Bizim için şu an herkes e, bir göreve odaklanmış durumda. 
o şampiyonluk, o kupa bizim için şu an en önemli hedef. Herkes bunun için ne yapması gerekirse yapacağından ben eminim. Takımıma, takım arkadaşlarıma, staffa, Ergin abiye güveniyorum. It's going to be a battle, but um, like I said, I have every single bit of faith and belief in our team, coaching staff, and the guys that I've been going to war with for three years now that we're going to go in there, fight and pull it out. So uh, I'm ready for it. Bravo be! İnanılmaz pasler. Arkasında gözleri var bu adamın. Başka bir açıklaması yok. Mitic şut yarattı kendisine. Bravo be! Mitic 3 sayılık isabet. Çok iyi oldu. 3 saniye, 2 saniye. Simon sağına vurdu. Kuno, Kuno, Kuno! Bravo be dansı. Çok güzel bir perde yaptı. Vasilya Mitic de potaya gidip smaçla bitirdi. Tayyus blok geldi Bryant Dunstan'dan. Bravo be! Ekici blok geldi Bryant Dunstan'dan. Boboa. Yanıyor. Sabit Rodrik bu bu adam. Lakin dışarıdan Rodrik Boboa. Üç sayılı ateş. Bravo be! Rodi, Rodi, Rodi, Rodi. Beşte beş. Şimdi Shane Larkin'e Mitsic üç sayılı ateş. Bravo! Mitsic üç sayılı isabeti buluyor. Oh shit. 